and welcome to the Woodrow Wilson House, a site of the National Trust for Historic Preservation. My name is Elizabeth Karcher and I'm the Executive Director. It's my pleasure to welcome you to see the suffrage outside the 19th Amendment at 100 here at the Woodrow Wilson House. We started this exhibit this summer. It opened on September 10th and I'm thrilled that we're able to be giving you a virtual tour this afternoon. It's a spectacular day. People ask me, how did it happen that you came upon a Suffrage Outside exhibit during a pandemic? And what inspired you? And so you'll see the pictures of the uh, flags. And I have to say, the inspiration came from uh, a small project that we did at the outset of the pandemic. In April, when we were all confined to our homes, people got busy bu building Victory Gardens. And here at the Wilson House, we started a Victory Garden. Uh, it was, we never had it before. We did a lot of research. I did a lot of research on putting one together. And we started to see this trend of uh, images of Columbia that was used for plant the seeds of victory. And we decided we would compare the Victory Garden of 18, 1918 to uh, kitchen gardens of today that they have at the White House. And we started to do the research and see the history of Columbia was then, that personification of America, was then used by the suffragists as well as many of their images that they used to portray uh, the suffrage movement. Fast forward to May, we were asked to do an exhibition on suffrage outside, at the, or suffrage, at the Wilson House. We couldn't do it in the house, and so we looked to those flags and to the placards that we had in the front victory garden and thought, that's what suffragists did. They carried flags, they had banners, and they took their march outside. And so we did too. We put together some images that we came across uh, mostly about Columbia and started doing research on flags and images of Columbia, uh, primarily from 1918 and the beginning of, uh, of the war movement for America. Uh, and then as we dug a little deeper, we started to see a trend of how we could take those images and start this exhibition. As you go through the garden, you'll see we've divided it up into six different sections of what we mean by outside. We start with suffrage uh, outside, women working outside the home, and then we move to women and who are pushed outside the mainstream of the movement. You'll see some flags from uh, the women who are protesting outside the White House. We have a whole section on women who are taking it outside to the streets. And this is when women are starting to wear different, uh, their signs on their clothes, they're taking their politics and wearing it on their outside clothing and they're starting to march. And that's something that's new. Uh, we take it to women participating in World War I and so they're working again outside the home for the war effort. And then finally the last section takes us to women and our alliances outside the United States. And we talk about the uh, different alliances we have with different countries where women had the right to vote before the American women. So with that, I'd like to highlight a few of the themes that I think are important, particularly for this uh, conference and this uh, where women made history. Um, this uh, is really important to us to demonstrate and illustrate uh, how we came about putting this together. So we have, uh, we looked through a lot of images. Most of them are from the Library of Congress. We took the images and we thought, we can't just do black and whites outside on flags in the backyard. That would be, wouldn't really tell a story. This, our world is turned upside down. That's why we need to do an exhibition outside. We can't even do it inside the house. So we thought, let's take these images and take the original, which is black and white, and stretch it and morph it and change it by colorizing it to be a little bit more whimsical, to be uh, uh, something that's fun and beautiful to look at at this garden. So that's how it started. We took the black and whites, we stretched them. They're very long on these canvases. The canvas is actually three feet wide by almost nine feet tall. So some of them are a little pixelated, but we've come to realize that that brings the beauty to some of the images. The themes that we focused on are women working outside the home and the African-American and immigrant and Asian women who were pushed outside the mainstream of the movement 
And then once again, working outside the home of the uh, working women who were working for the war effort. That evolution started from 1908 with Wilson, who had written a letter, and we've got an audio tape of it, uh, of a reading of that letter, where he's saying women shouldn't have the right to vote. They don't have the experience they need to vote. They don't have any experience because they're not working outside the home. And should they have that experience, it would completely change the dynamic of the family. And that was his rationale for not having women have the right to vote. As the ex exhibition progresses, you'll see we do have a photograph of Woodrow Wilson. He is uh, coming home from voting on uh, October 19th, 1915, where he was voting in New Jersey for suffrage. He did believe that, that we should, women should, by 1915, that women should have the right to vote. He votes for suffrage, but he doesn't believe it or feel that it should be a constitutional amendment. And that's why you then see them protesting outside the White House and saying, if you feel it in your heart that women should have the vote, then you need to make a constitutional amendment. By the time the war rolls around and women have contributed and sacrificed their, their husbands, brothers, fathers uh, to the war, Woodrow Wilson then addresses in 1918 addresses the Senate, and uh, we also have a reading from that address stating women have been our partners. They have sacrificed just as much, if not more, for this war effort. And so how can we not enfranchise them with the right to vote? And that was his uh, appeal to Senate to make the constitutional amendment. The flags that I'd like to point out specifically are, uh, which I think are captivating, is one in the section of uh, where women are working outside the home. We have one image of Jeanette Rankin, and she is, this is a colorized image. If you see the black and white, you see it's, she's coming down the steps of Congress. There are two men standing up at the back. They're kind of looking like they're talking, maybe smoking, and she's walking down, uh, down the steps. She's working outside the home in a job that is unusual for a woman at that time. Uh, and I think the picture is just remarkable uh, and, and very telling of the time of what she's wearing and, and her movement. The next image that I think is, is rather beautiful is of Mary Terrell. I think that this black and white, which we specifically chose not to colorize the photograph uh, of the, an African-American woman in this particular picture, nor of the um, uh, Mabel Lee, um, we I think that this picture is uh, ethereal and beautiful and just talks and shows the calmness uh, and the dignity of this woman and as well as the movement for women who were pushed outside the mainstream of the middle class white woman's movement uh, and yet they fought with dignity and, uh, and elegance and you see that in that beautiful portrait of her. The next section that I think is interesting and the flags I think also speak to this women working outside the home and tie together the two elements of women working outside the home but also women being pushed outside the mainstream are the two flags that demonstrate and illustrate women uh, working during World War I. One is the stenographers and this lovely poster, which is uh, a poster we got from the Library of Congress, uh, and the other is the women of the land army. The women who were stenographers were traditionally during World War I were white women. Uh, those were the jobs that white women were doing for the war effort. And by contrast, you, although you see a white woman advertising to be part of the land army, it was actually African American women who were, more, who were really supporting the land army and doing the more manual labor work. Um, so I think that it's important to see those two posters uh, next to one another because it does speak to that theme of women working outside the home, but that difference of how it is for the women who were pushed outside the mainstream of the movement. So with that, people asked, how are you going to do this at the Woodrow Wilson House? And we have a beautiful historic garden. Uh, we're located in the heart of Calorama, the house in Washington, D.C. The house was built uh, at the early 1915-1916. It was designed and built by Waddy Butler Wood, and he was a famous architect, many buildings across Washington, D.C. The garden that was, that was built and designed by, Wood, by Waddy Butler Wood 
uh, is exactly as it was a hundred years ago, completely intact. And I look at that garden and thought, this is where this exhibition needs to take place. It's outside, that's where the women took their fight, they brought their flags outside, they marched outside, and so we thought no better place than the Woodrow Wilson House rear garden. The exhibit is completely 100% COVID safe in that you book online, we have timed entry, you do not enter the house to see the exhibit, you come through the garage. Uh, we have sanitizers uh, located throughout the exhibit. Um, we do have a restroom that's open for our visitors as well as our gift shop, uh, and, but the rest of the house is closed for the, uh, for the remainder until phase two is over in Washington, D.C. With that, if you'd like to book your tickets, you can go to woodrowwilsonhouse.org online and reserve your spot. And it would be my pleasure to welcome you to the Woodrow Wilson House to see Suffrage Outside, the 19th Amendment at 100.